Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Memorial Day weekend, three-day weekend here for some of us. It is May 27th, 2024, about 12.05 in the p.m. here in California. Latest activity on the Earthquake 3D globe looks like a 2.5 there into the uh, Middle America Trench, it looks like. Also some movement there in uh, California. We'll get to the earthquake activity here in just a moment. I want to chat about the space weather activity. This, this is from last night during a large explosion there on the sun from a very large sunspot, uh, very active. This was an X 2.9 flare. Uh, this was not earth directed. Had that been earth directed, we'd be looking at some uh, potential uh, nice aurora activity once again here. This is from that former sunspot. 3664 it's already went all the way around the far side of the sun coming back around again for a revisit and it looks as though this active region will continue to produce large flares and all obviously the uh, threat of massive CMEs in the earth directed view once it's over here into position but this was last night goodness shot off a huge amount of plasma from that X flare a look at the activity here today. Let's show you guys a flare from last night on the chart. Way up there. About an X 2.9 or so. That was a uh, fairly explosive event as noted. It did have a CME obviously, but not earth directed. We're still flaring here with some C flare activity. Uh, let's see if we can get a, a little view of this sunspot coming around. Getting uh, a little bit better angle of it over here on the southeastern limb of the sun quite dynamic and complex in terms of the magnetic structure that that sunspot harbors now there is some uh flaring going on up here across the northern northeastern uh, quadrant of the sun as well but i think all eyes are going to be on this region here coming around the southeastern limb uh, so let's see if we got a little magnetogram image of it just barely barely getting a, a glimpse of it Remember when it went over here a couple weeks ago, it was still quite dynamic, throwing off X flares. When it was on the far side of the sun, it did produce a massive explosion as well, full halo CME on the far side of the sun. Most recent here was last night, and I'm sure uh, I can only assume here that we'll continue to see uh, explosive activity and the chances of Earth-directed um, space weather events here soon. Once this is into a little bit better perspective, uh, a little bit better position, I should say. Uh, this area up here in the northeastern, or yeah, northeastern area of the sun, picking up steam a little bit, it looks like. Notice the uh, complexity here growing within the sunspot region. Uh, this was looking a little disappointing here when it came around the bend, when it came around, around the uh, northeastern limb, but it looks like things are starting to... Uh, develop and intensify within this region here so we got 3691 and the unnamed sunspot down here old sunspot 3664 again that's the source of many x flares and the recent historic aurora events here uh, weeks back earlier this month um, unnamed but i'm sure it will get a name here once it's a little bit more viewable on the earth facing side of the sun so overall threat right now has been elevated. C flare at 99% chance, M flare at 60, and X flare, there you go, 25% chance here. And I'm sure that will remain uh, at least this elevated conditions as the uh, sunspot enters into view uh, more uh, directly. Could go up. No major roars in the forecast for now, but uh, obviously that could change with this very active region. And again, a couple active regions, the one growing up here in the northeastern limb and the uh, the old sunspot 3664 coming around. All right, uh, what do we got here for earthquake activity? A little swarming going on here south of the border uh, into the Baja California region. Now, mostly twos and threes. It did start off with a four this morning. Uh, so elevated earthquake activity here once again across Southern California as well. We did see some movement near the uh, Borrego Springs area, and overall somewhat an elevated uptick in earthquake activity here in the last 24 hours. So this whole region right here looks like it may want to uh, continue to swarm, and uh, as always, there's that potential of some larger scale movement out here. 
Uh, you know, during the last couple of weeks or so, we've seen several different swarms uh, down here south of the border, near the Brawley Seismic Zone, a couple near the San Jacinto Fault Zone, and, you know, it, this is continuing today. So overall, got to keep an eye on the southern area here of California uh, with its proximity on the plate boundary, the San Andreas Fault here, the southern branch, very capable of producing a large damaging earthquake here in the future. Uh, overall, though, look at that. California lighting up pretty much all over the West Coast here. We did see some activity underneath the Lake Almanor area. Looks like a 3.5 prior to that, a 2.1 coming in. A little bit of activity across the coast range as well in the San Francisco Bay. Uh, right now, a little bit of movement outside of the Tonopah, Nevada area. This is near the uh, Candelaria Hills. Looks like a little bit of uh, activity there. A couple twos and some small ones. So keep an eye on California, Texas area. These oil fields getting hit out here again, like always. Uh, not a whole lot for the rest of the country out here today. Of course, it is a holiday, so the USGS probably uh, won't show anything out here that's, you know, for a small scale, uh, unless someone takes a look at the data. Uh, that won't come in until tomorrow. Once they're back in operations there. Uh, let's check out the Earthquake 3D globe here. Make sure everything's good. We're recording. Okay. Feels like a Monday. I mean, it is a Monday, but uh, it's got an off feeling to it. Could be because of the holiday. I don't know. Uh, a little bit of movement here across Puerto Rico and the Caribbean plate in general. Really nothing of major concern uh, over here across the Alaska area. Notice this, uh, I think we had a little four-pointer down there last night. Although this is just an area of swarming right now uh, into the uh, Lucian Trench. We'll continue to keep an eye on this area. It has been quite active here in the recent days. Older quake here from yesterday, the Kuril Kamachaka Trench, 121 kilometers for this 5.2. And uh, the area down here that's been rocking and rolling here recently with sixes. Uh, looks like most of the movement here scattered out and about we did see a lot of deep activity here into the tonga trench and subsequent shallower earthquake movement here and uh really haven't noticed any major change out here uh, solomon islands did see a 5.2 yesterday the latest one in this area 4.7 that's going to be back over here across the plate boundary very shallow south of vanuatu area <coughs> so this area ba bouncing back and forth between deep and surface adjustment still needs to be watched here. There's been a lot of sixes out here in the last few days. A couple sixes, I should say. I shouldn't say a lot. But uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on this region here uh, for some further movement with that activity ongoing. New Zealand, couple threes stirring up down there. Nothing major for now. Uh, looks like we did have a couple fours here further south along the Kamachaka. Nothing being reported here by the USGS, so... That's why I always like to keep the EMSC data on the globe as well, as there is earthquake activity not being reported. And uh, it's within that range where they should be reporting it. Uh, let's see here. Some movement yesterday around China area. Uh, let's go back over here and see Mediterranean region still quite active out here. Twos and threes. A little odd earthquake out here in the uh, Indian Ocean region, 4.4. Really nothing. Uh, it's going to be around the Arabian Sea area, it looks like. Off the plate boundary. It does look like it's in uh, maybe out here across the uh, Arabian Basin region for a 4.4. Fairly new earthquake. The Atlantic Ocean movement north and south there of Iceland. So let's go double check that see what's going on there. Across the Iceland area. Ooh, goodness. Yikes. Getting uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity out here across the Grindavik region and the Craters area. Let me um, double check this and see what we got. We'll go to the Live from Iceland site here. And it uh, doesn't look like there's anything. Man, those clouds are just zipping along up here. 
Uh, there at the surface, I don't see any visual eruption there. Maybe some smoke out there in the background, some volcanic gases, but uh, really not seeing anything of interest in terms of the eruption. But goodness, we got a lot of earthquake activity stirring up out there. Uh, this update from the Icelandic Met Office, the folks that monitor the um, ongoing eruption activity, or well, the ongoing recent on uh, eruptive activity here <laughs> has been uh, the site. And right now, as of right now, there's uh, it's an older update here from a few days ago. So uh, I don't know if they're going to get to that today or not. But definitely seeing some earthquake activity on the uptick here today. And if we include all of these smaller ones here, Getting quite a bit here south, just right around the, uh, just outside of the Grindavik area here. A little concerning, obviously, because there is that potential of seeing a magma intrusion in this area with eruptive fissure activity taking place here. So we do got to watch that. That's the last 24 hours, last 12 hours. Uh, still shows some movement out here across the area and, of course, around the crater area where the most recent um, eruption activity took place. I think it was a little bit more south here, but... Either way, we'll continue to watch it. Broad scale uh, activity here across the rift zones taking place here in the last 24 hours. And of course, that's the time to be vigilant and watch the area down here uh, for some eruptive activity. I don't think this is the event that we're looking for in terms of hundreds of earthquakes within a short amount of time, but it looks like it is increasing out here. So we'll keep an eye on this throughout the day today. Uh, let's see here. That was kind of weird. Make sure I got the most recent data here, which I do. All right, uh, Hawaii. Let's go check this out real quick here and see what's going on. Looks like it's, eh, goodness, I don't know what's going on here with Hawaii, actually. This is, it's been quite inflated, but, uh, and we're technically at our highest level since 2018, but it's not acting normal just kind of uh let me show you guys here on the deformation data got that going up and going down pattern here typical inflation uh that we've seen but i'm really surprised we haven't seen any type of displacement going on there or some type of uh movement from the summit either eruption or uh, seeing the magma displaced somewhere down below. But this one looks a little odd. It looks almost too smooth to be raw data coming in. So there's our highest level. And of course, if you look at the uh, the years, we're up there. Highest level seen on the inflation at the summit since 2018. So things are uh, getting close. Uh, as far as earthquake activity goes, let's see what we got here across the summit area. That one's not working. Infrasound. Yeah, earthquake activity fairly minimal. Only a handful of smaller quakes there in the last 24 hours, so really not a not a big change. All right. Well, we'll definitely continue to keep an eye on California right now with elevated uh, activity here. As noted, pretty uh, obvious. All that movement brushing up right against the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. How much more strain this area can see or accumulate is a very good question. I think that's a question that's been uh, questioned for many, many years. You know, I remember hearing about this um, back when I was younger in Southern California is well overdue for the big one. And that was, you know, quite a while ago. So now we're even one day closer, an hour closer, a minute closer, a second closer to the big one taking place out here. Matter of time, I guess. Current day one outlook for severe weather. There's your tornado threats out there today across portions of the east. And a uh, 2% zone out in Texas and a couple other areas here around that 5% zone. So main threat today, you know, looks like uh, some wind and hail in there as well. Just kind of a neutral severe weather threat day. Um, but keep your eyes on the sky. Obviously, it's been quite a crazy season here for tornadoes. 
the severe weather threat returns back here across Texas uh, with a 2% chance for tornado activity for Tuesday. Not a big deal, but there is that potential. Main threat, I think, is going to be some wind and some large damaging hail that Texas is also known for. Everything's bigger in Texas, right? Even the hailstones. Uh, and then day three looks like just moderate uh, or minor severe thunderstorm risk out here across the good portion, a central portion of the country here. We'll check back on that a little bit later, though. Uh, but for now, I think we need to keep an eye on the sunspot there. Still, still 3664. It hasn't changed, I mean, for now, until they rename it uh, because they... That's just what they do. As soon as a sunspot comes around on the Earth-facing side, it gets a new name. But uh, this is in the history books already, 3664, a culprit of the historic Aurora events. I've seen the Auroras for the first time in my life ever here in Northern California. Beautiful pink and uh, some green out there as well. Of course, the pinkish ones indicating some much higher Auroras, but they were still quite awesome. I have a feeling we're going to be checking back in here for some further updates with a potential flare threat here from these sunspots uh, in the coming hours and days. We'll continue to watch it and, of course, report back on things as, uh, as they evolve. So let me uh, fix this uh, flare threat level here and... Um, And then we'll get this video uploaded here. Hope everyone's having a good Memorial Day out there. A lot of people barbecuing. I, I don't know. I did my barbecue here a uh, couple days ago. And uh, just not quite ready for another barbecue. I kind of do it on off days. When everyone else is not barbecuing, I tend to break out the barbecue and just smoke out the neighborhood. That's, I don't know. That's just how I am. I barbecue on demand, I guess, when my when my uh, stomach tells me, let's barbecue, have some good food. All right, folks, keep an eye on California. And uh, I'm going to bring this down just a little bit in terms of the earthquake count because uh, it looks like it was on about 30 hours or so. Hold on a second. Okay, I do need to fix that because we're missing our large quake activity from yesterday so I guess we will keep it right about there it's just a lot of earthquake activity out here all right folks we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on today unless something major happens have a good day catch you folks later